Hey, so I've received a few questions um, asking for a little more information about event handlers and how they actually work. Um, and I've had a few people run into um, the awesome error that Visual Studio gives you um, if you start tinkering with event handlers um, that you've built through the design view. Um, and so what I thought I'd do with this little tutorial is basically um, very quickly just kind of step through um, sort of the fundamentals of how the event handlers work and sort of uh, show you what's going on and uh, most importantly how to resolve that issue if uh, if you muck up um, at least according to Visual Studio uh, the way your event handlers are set up or way that it's helped you set them up so let's jump right in I'm gonna start a new project um, call it one form about events um, if you want to do this just to, to monkey with it yourself you can um, or you can just kind of watch along that's probably sufficient as well so we'll let that create okay so we have a an empty uh, uh, wind form. And uh, so I want to talk about a couple things first. So what we're used to seeing here is the design view, right? This is where we can drag and drop things onto our onto our onto our um, our form here, uh, you know, kind of however we see fit and we can kind of visually design what we're trying to do. Um, we've also, um, if you've seen other stuff that we've done or if you've, you've done um, visual program before, you also have the code behind the form, right? So um, this is also, uh, you know, this is where you you would generally put all of your event handlers and and sort of make your application do the things that you want it to do. Um, but there's also one other piece that um, you probably don't mess with much if you use Visual Studio, um, and that's called the designer file. And so if you come inside your form, yours probably starts out looking like this. Um, you'll notice that you have uh, form one, which is this file right here, um, and then you also have a designer CS file. And if you expand that and open it, what you'll see is basically um, some code. And, and most of this gets automatically generated by Visual Studio. You can certainly come in here and tweak this, although um, I believe they discourage it You know, with their comments. They tell you not to mess with this. Um, and that's because, <clears throat> or the reason they tell you that is because when you do things in design view, um, this designer file is what gets updated. Now you'll notice right now, if I remove this button, so we have nothing on our design view, right? We have nothing on our form, just the very basic form. Here's the, the size of our form, the fonts that we're using, that sort of thing, the title of the form. If I come in here and I change this guy, let's go in design view, and let's change the, the text of the form to just say about events. Um, what we'll see over here is that that changed this piece of code right here. So this is really the kind of piece of code that happens or gets built behind the scenes by Visual Studio for you. Um, also, you'll notice if I added a button, um, if we come back into design view, you'll see now that there is a button code that's been added that specifies where the button resides, what kind of font is on the button, what the text of the button is, the name of the button, that sort of thing. Um, so you can understand why Visual Studio uh, doesn't really want you messing with this file um, because it'd be very easy to mess something up um, and then that would make it difficult for you or for Visual Studio to, to sort of render the design view, um, which is one of the problems that people run into, especially when they begin messing with event handlers and that sort of thing. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, um, uh, I'll just change the text on this and say go, oops, not pgo, just go. And I'm going to go ahead and create an event handler for Go that just says, um, we're going to, we'll just show a message box. Go button was pressed. Okay. Uh, if I run this right now and I press the Go button, you'll see that I get a uh, message box that says go button was pressed right exactly as we would anticipate no no worries there um, now what I what people are running into and especially people who are new to Visual Studio programming um, when it comes to event handlers uh, is if you once this guy's been written once this has been built and if you did it through the designer view um, it's you have to you can't just go in and change this now if you go in and change this now um, you're going to cause yourself problems because this method name is recorded or is used in the design view elsewhere um, and what i mean by that is when you add an event handler in design view if we come and look in design view you'll see that for the click we have a method specified as button one click 
which is this method right here, button one click. This is also uh, noted inside of our designer view or the designer CS file. And this is how you actually, code-wise, this is how you would actually add um, an event handler or you could, you could also remove an event handler using the same sort of syntax um, to a particular button or a control on your WinForm. Um, so if I come in here to uh, um, the, the form itself where I'm, where I'm actually handling the event and I change the name of this and just put my in front of it, for instance, you'll notice that that doesn't change this. The only thing that changes this file is when you're messing with design view. Um, if you, if you are, are in code view and you're just messing with the code, um, it doesn't have any impact here. It's not smart enough to know that I just added a my underscore in front of this button, this method name. So what will happen is Visual Studio doesn't know how to render this and you'll get an error that looks something like this. Um, if you click on the, the link, it will take you to the design view where the error actually is, right? So it's saying I can't find button one click. It makes sense that it can't find button one click because we changed the name of button one click. If I want to resolve this error, I can simply take this back to the way it was. That would resolve it. And if I go into design view, you'll notice that we're back to normal. Um, or, uh, you know, if I want it, if I really want the name of of the uh, the method to be that, because you know, let's face it, sometimes, um, you know, I might go in afterwards and change the name of the button to um, something that makes more sense beyond button one. And if I'm trying to kind of carry pragmatics through my code, I would want to probably also change the name of this method. Um, so if you're going to do that, there's two ways that you can do that, right? You either need to change it here and then open your design view and manually go in here and change it there. Uh, and that would solve the problem, right? Or what you can do is before you change this, come into your design view click on your button, go to your event handler, and change it here first. Now this this is a little bit more work, right? Because it will create actually a, another method for you. Um, it will leave what you had before as long as there is code in it. If there's no code in it, it will delete it. Um, and I'll show you that in a second. But you know, in this case, what we would basically need to do is just copy and paste, right? Whatever we wanted. And then we could remove this and everything would be good and well. Um, if for instance, I didn't have anything here, let me go and get rid of that. And I go into my design view and I change uh, the name of the method. Another, oops. And press enter. Actually, I did keep it. I'm surprised. Uh, maybe if I get rid of that. Oops. Let me try that again. I was fairly certain. Oh, I just broke it. So let's go here and let's remove this one more time. You can see we're back to normal. And if I go look at this, there's no code in here, no spaces, no returns or anything. If I try this one more time, maybe I'm not a liar. Oh, I kept it. Okay, well, there you go. I guess it does keep it. So you can just go in here and manually delete it, right? You don't need this, uh, you don't need this in there anyways. Um, so when you, when you run into that kind of a problem, um, where you get that that uh, that error because the designer can't render itself um, because something's been kind of hosed with with the designer file, um, that's that's the easiest way to fix that. There are other issues that can cause that same rendering problem. Um, if you start getting into the code and monkeying with form names or with class names or namespaces, um, you know that can cause problems as well. I mean, you see the word the keyword partial here. That means that this is part of a class called form one. Um, that same class exists right here as well, right? So basically it's pulling from these two different areas to form this one class on the whole. That's why the, the keyword partial is used. Um, but there's one other thing I was gonna show you guys while I'm here. And um, that is, I kind of alluded to already, but that is basically how to add and remove um, event handlers sort of on the fly. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is save this guy. I basically just removed the event handler from, from my design code. Um, so if I run this right now, this isn't gonna do anything, right? Because I just removed that event handler. We still have the method there, um, and although it doesn't do anything either. So let's do this. Um, let's do, let's add our med message box back again. Go button was pressed. 
Okay. So if I run this now, you'll see, oops, it might help if I actually hook that up. So if I come into my click, there's my method, right? It's called an, it's called another my button click because um, that's where we left it. So you'll see now we're, we're getting what we expected, right? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a checkbox up here that's just going to say uh, enable um, event handler for go button. And basically, I'm going to toggle that. And when I toggle that, it's going to control whether or not the event handler is active or not. Okay. Um, so let's go back into design view. I'm going to get a checkbox. My checkbox is going to say, uh, by default, we'll say disable event. We'll say button event handler. Um, I'm going to double click on this guy to create an event handler for the checkbox. So when the check is changed, what I want to do is if it's checked, oops, what do I want to do? If it is checked, what does it say again? It says disable. So I'm going to say, I copied this from my event handler. Um, button one dot click is, is, so button one is the name of the control. Click is the event handler, right? If we, if we look at here, the name of the event is click, right? And what we're saying is we're adding a new event handler and it's called another my button one click. Now, what I said is though, is that uh, we want to disable the, the button event handler, right? Um, if it's checked. So let's do this. So we're going to say minus equals. And then else we are going to say add it, right? And we'll say plus equals. And this shouldn't be check allowed. This should be checked. Right? So what we're saying is when this gets checked, when, they, when it, an event gets fired, when this, this gets checked or unchecked, um, if it's checked, then what we want to say is we're going to remove the, the event handler from the button. If it's not checked, then what we want is the event handler to be intact, right? We want we want that message box to show when we click it. So this is simple enough, right? So if I run this now, by default, the event handler is already turned on, right? Because we have that set through design view. However, if I check this box, now when I click go, I'm clicking a bunch and I get nothing, right? If I check it back again, you'll notice that the event handler is turned back on. Sometimes it's advantageous to be able to control event handlers. Maybe you don't want to offer certain functionality without other things um, being set up in place, um, that sort of thing. So it is it is uh, advantageous to understand how event handlers are added and removed. Um, but uh, this is basically how that works. Okay. So uh, a real quick and dirty tutorial on um, event handlers and sort of what's going on behind the scenes. Hopefully this helps you out. Um, and if you run into you know, the problem where uh, you get Visual Studio's awesome um, prevent possible data loss error, uh, you'll know how to, how to attack it if, if event handlers are the culprit. So uh, thanks a lot. Take care.